Tilmuna is our future. We have a priority flow. We're going to work together to prioritize. And guess what? We have good news. We figured out the Wi Fi issue. It's we the most out the Wi-Fi issue. simple issue it's we've nice. ever had. Thank God. The guy in the studio was turning it off when he left. One guy left to shift because he was a good guy and he wants to make sure he turned everything off. And the new guy that came hadn't yet come. So we didn't have Wi Fi in the middle of the class. Isn't that amazing? So simple. It was just a matter of an off switch. But now we're here and everything's working fully. Thank God. And we had the most amazing Amuna class yesterday in the studio with Rav Shalom Arish, our host, sitting right here, and Rav Dain Elgad sitting next to me here. And I was over there just, you know, busy with the posting and making sure your Q&A and then feedback was taken care of. Thank God we are here now, not in Toronto. We're here in Yushalayim, Erev Kodesh, the holy city, with Rav Shalom Arish's studio. And this is Eddie Goldsmith. We have the opportunity to flow in a prioritization concept. It's really, really profound how it can affect your life. We spoke once in these classes of Munaz, our future, about time management, about being effective with how we use our time. And that was one of my concerns with that everything should work fully. Do remember, we have the online resources for you guys to be able to tune in because we are able to do this not only um, live, but we have the posts that will go up on the YouTube website and YouTube channel. And please, God, on our Amuna is our future podcast, Breads of Israel. And we also have the ability, all of us, to really tune in together on a weekly level through all our different resources, through our website, through our Facebook, through our Instagram live. Now we're going live there as well. And Baruch Hashem, this is all a development to be more effective of how we use our time so that when we learn together, it should be done in a way that really makes a difference. Now, people just reminded me, it was actually Yanin from Chazak, that we do have a Hanukkah Chazak event coming up through Rav Shalom Morish, And that's really exciting. But before we go to Hanukkah, next Sunday in our Amuna class in the studio, we're going to have another musician. And we definitely missed that. And... It's something which is missing, you know, like um, when we have these classes, the musical aspect. And his name is Mendy Weinreb. He's going to come, please God, with one of his brothers. Uh, people who know Mendy Weinreb will put out some of his music. He's going to come and entertain us and bring some soulful music into our Amuna class Q&A next week. And if I do look a little bit tired, you guys add cold because it has starting to get wintry over here. You'll understand that I've been working up, you know, all day yesterday. We had six hours of meetings with the class and to get today another three hours. Plus, I was busy editing and putting up Rav Yonatan Galed's class. We're very excited to put it up. And um, at the end of the week, we put up um, Gedalia Fenster's important class and dating relationships. All these classes are really important. And obviously, daily, we're putting up our daily halakhic corner. And we have good news. I'm doing an Amuna class online, <laughs> not exactly a middle class, it's going to be more a United Souls, which is my own personal projects, but it goes together with what we're doing here, because it's very much about working on the soul level, which is something which is very much collaborative with Rav Orish's message to the world. And the vibe, the flow of today's class, of what we're going to be going into is about priorities, keeping focused on what is important. And it's so tested at important times like thank god as as i mentioned before yanev also reminded me he wished me a muzzle tov that we have an opportunity personally i have a wedding coming up my first wedding and a bar mitzvah all in a week <laughs> maybe eight days let's say so there's going to be the sheva rockers and we're going to climax with the bar mitzvah and thank god you'll see posted i already put um a beautiful picture of my son with his fill-in and a hat and, you know, he's shopping or whatever. You know, it's a big thing, big struggle to, in the Corona challenge, to make a simcha the way it used to be. But as I was speaking to a holy Yushami this morning, he said to me, his name's Kraus, he said that nowadays we're getting more emistic. We're getting back to what was, where we're doing it more simple, more without the frills, without the excess, without the extras. 
and we're focusing in on what the ikka, what the priority, what the effective focus should be when you make a simcha for your family and for your loved ones. That you no longer need to, you know, overspend or overstress. I mean, it is some sort of stress aspect. Why? So for me personally, having a wedding and a bar mitzvah, Erev Hanukkah, and we've got, thank God we have the Toronto class, we're going to have a music class next week, and then we've got Chazak coming, Hanukkah, with many classes. With all this stuff going on, it can get a little bit stressful, and also helping, obviously, you know, thank God I have a holy soulmate who does most of the work. But just say, I mean, there's still a lot on the head, and a person has to realize that by effectively planning your schedule and what's important, that will be gold when it comes to this kind of being that we're goldsmiths that's an important word it should be basically a golden opportunity to know what your value system stands for what your goals what your priorities like we're learning in the partial Yaakov Avinu Yaakov Avinu was an Ish Emes we learned already last week we mentioned that Yaakov Avinu stands on feet of truth like the Sulam, the ladder going all the way up to heaven and bringing down all the divine influence for his family that he built. He went and built the, the Shifte Ka, the holy tribes, the 12 tribes of Yisrael, so that we could have representatives of Hashem's mission in the world, Yisrael. And that was Yaakov's mission. But now, Vayishlach, this week's Pasha, he's coming back to Eretz Yisrael with his family. And he hasn't yet completed the 12 tribes because Benjamin is only born in this week's Pasha, with, unfortunately, with Rochel Amena's demise. But the, the point is that as he's entering back into his soul, he has to once again face off with his arch enemy, which is not just Lovin in last week's Pasha, but now it's Ace of Russia, his own brother. And it's very hard to talk about that way, about a brother. He's called Mumi Yisrael, someone who was um, tremendous in potential, a great mind, which we see there are such people around. But if it's not used in the right way, it's not focused in a way that makes it come out as Ratz and Hashem, as the will of God, then all that potential can get, you know, as we see in the world nowadays, there's tremendous power and abilities to accomplish, you know, with these massive, powerful countries and empires and all kinds of things. But we have the power today to tune in to the Ratz and Hashem and not get jaded by all the power systems that go on, like in the media and with the politics and everything that could make us less effective and less focused on our goals and values. And that's why it's very important that when you have Yaakov versus Esau, you understand that this is not just a war that went on in the Torah, but this is a historical war that's all the way till now, because it represents the person who's tuned into truth versus the person who's tuned into falsehood, like Lovin, or like Esau in his way. And each one are giving us opportunity to learn different ways of clarifying truth for ourselves, how to be more effective in ourselves, how to be more truthful. So that you see with his children, now in this week's Pasha, in Vaishlach, you see how it starts to come out, how they're behaving, like with the Maisa with Dina, and it, and it was, you know, there was a story there, maybe Dina was meant to go to Esav, but he ended up, she ended up by Shem, and there was a whole story there with Levi and Shimon, they went to the town and rescued her and killed all the people in the town. We see this kind of sort of uh, concept of being proactive, but in a way that was violent and and revengeful. And that's something which is hard to understand, you know, as we know that the Jewish people, thank God, and our mission is to be humanitarian and to 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 be people that mention and always reach out to the, the nations and the other people that we're dealing with in a peaceful way, especially now that we have our own country, Baruch Hashem. But the concept of that in the Pasha is that it was a very painful, painful moment for the family. And that's where we have to understand that sometimes there are going to be tests, not just from Esau, there's going to be tests from Shem, there's going to be tests from all kinds of people around who are going to test your ability to focus on what the priorities are. So, for example, good morning, Texas. When you're making a simcha, let's make this simple, yeah? Because it's very important to keep the concept simple. When you're making a wedding, you're making a bar mitzvah, you're making right now during corona crisis, there's a lot of pressure on people before this all took place to make a very big event to overspend, to, uh, to overstretch yourself, and therefore you have, God forbid, debts, which we know from Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Simcha, that he's against 
that concept of taking loans and in our generation when we have the whole credit card system and all kinds of ways you can get money it can end up a person going beyond his means for the sake of making an impression or making a, a large party that's not the fee really according to really where they're holding and that's obviously not being truthful and that was the challenge of Yaakov and that was a challenge of all our generations in this exile we're in right now, even more so with the, thank God, like Rav Orish said, there's a tremendous abundance in the world, even though people are saying right now with the coronavirus that there's a tremendous, you know, um, down, downfall of the economy. But the true reality, and thank God we still have our cream, like to always bring it here, just a reminder that we're still keeping conscious of that and our mask we wear when we need to. We still have all these little things. But the point is, to remind us of during this time, that there's a certain glimpse of inspiration. And that's why I'm going to be doing this course for Jeff Palver and his community online. And I put the link below, I think. And we'll definitely, I'll put it there. It will surface around and around. But I'm going to do a, a you know, an Eventbrite setup course on December the 27th where I can have the opportunity to actually teach this concept of United Souls and what it means, how to turn around this corona challenge that we're in so that we're no longer bound up by the more divisive forms that have come out through media, that politicize all the current issues. We can actually still, even under such a situation where the world is going in a certain direction, that we can still transform. And they use this word pivot, but I'd like to say being more versatile, emotionally intelligent. And as Ravarish teaches us to, to work this whole process through with Amuna, that it's preparing us for a new transition into a more spiritual and valued based way of living that we're no longer overly physical, we're not overly partying or overly spending or overly, you know, obsessed with how we're going to get our next holiday or next event or next uh, party. That when, when we do have an opportunity to share, like that we are personally having a wedding or making up a mitzvah, that you focus in on what's really needed, what the child, what the person you're celebrating with really needs and really needs, not just, you know, a show, show off kind of thing. And therefore, the people you involve are the people that really can be there. And the good news, say, for example, for us, that even though my family can't be there from Chutzlites, but we have, once again, all these amazing, you know, you know, have these amazing t tools technologically wise, where we're able to host people through Zoom and through YouTube. We're going to have a live feed and we're able to include people that are no longer able, unfortunately, to fly to, uh, to the Holy Land right now during the Simcha. They are able to include people globally like we do in our classes. And this is an example of taking the current situation, which is very challenging and very emotionally hard on a person. Let's be real. But then remembering, like, like we said in this week's Pasha, Yaakov had a hard time. His family, there was already stuff started going on with the sons and things were happening that weren't so simple. And Yaakov was being tested again and again. He even had a fight with the angel of Esau to overcome the Yetzirah for all the generations, all the evil inclinations, all the challenges, all the inner struggles of that pain. That, that is the kind of struggles that we are going through as as people of before the times of the, the Messiah, the Mashiach, as, the, as Rav Ash spoke about last night, that this concept that it's very profound in the challenge that we should be going through. And it, I do ask once again for forgiveness because this is my second time now teaching after such a busy, busy schedule. And I haven't eaten, I haven't drunk so much. Here's about as much as I've had. I just need the, the little bit of mercy on your part because we're trying to do everything here thank god in the most effective way we want to better have our muna classes we want to better have please god Ravorish. we want to be able to keep showing and demonstrating our journey here in Yushalayim to the world so that you guys can learn from people like Rav Shalom Marsh and his beautiful Garden of Amunah series books and all the different other things that we're doing here. And remember, when you have someone like Gedalia Fenster, you're getting from Miami. And when we had yesterday from Toronto, you're getting, we had the Rav Gileosan from Toronto. And when you're having other visitors that are joining us in the studio earlier on Mazur, we had online from South Africa and all the other guests like Mendy Weinreb has moved recently from America that proves that people can make aliyah and hopefully we'll talk about that a little bit next week when we have our next Amuna class. These are all opportunities to meet all kinds of people that have really grown and are role models and give us like Yaakovino in the Pasha, give us that 
focus on truth, on values. And that's the key, that when you have that value system, and that's what we quoted from Stephen Covey when we gave this class before, that you have this concept of values and grounded of what your mission statement is, what your purpose is, what your mission is. Then, once that's clear, so then when you go into your daily planning and how you take your experiences in life, when you're talking to your family and your loved ones, and they're obviously family first, they're the people that are most important, and you're tuning into that aspect of even though it's busy, but the people you love are priority. And that's the concept of prioritizing correctly, that the people that are in front of you, like I saw from our voice yesterday, it was unbelievable, the Muna meetings we had, and the way he was able to talk to each person. And, you know, I have, as, you know, someone who's organizing this, as the MC trying to move it along. And he's like, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, you know, we're, we're moving somewhere with this person. We need to talk and continue and develop and discuss. And that's the concept of having patience and being able to focus and know what Rats and Hashem, what the priority is. That I feel that when I'm in Ravosh and, and other such righteous people, when you talk to them, they're totally present. And that's the concept of being able to tune into the now. Like Eckhart Tolle teaches, this power of now and healing off, this concept of really being completely in the moment and using that moment fully to the, to the gift that it is, the moment of life, and to be completely present in that moment so you can experience the godliness and the oneness. And the fact that we're going to talk about this in my Please God in my online class on 27th of December, and we'll keep talking about it here as well in small little parts, but in a focused way, we're going to talk about this united soul experience. So we're all really miyachid. With all the people we care about, we're constantly experiencing life together with all their souls as well. Like the live feed demonstrates that you're going to be able to make a wedding of a mitzvah, wherever it is, a bris, whatever simcha it is. You're going to be, please God, you're going to be able to, you know, have a celebration. You've got a raise. People are thinking, wow, get a raise right now during this Corona challenge. Yeah, as Gedalia says, there's a tremendous abundance right now. The, the, by the mindset you have, we can actually change this this supposed crisis into an opportunity to rebuild ourselves, to replan, to re-envision what our purpose is. And then we can get that priority into our daily schedule so that we can live our, our success journey in a more fulfilled way. And that's the concept that right now, being in 2020, they're coming to that end of that non-Jewish calendar, coming to Hanukkah, where there's a tremendous inspiration, as we spoke in the last few weeks, of light and awareness and clarity of thought. And I want to remind you that I was learning with my son in the Kuti Alokas from Rabbi Nachman Sefer, Rabbi Nossin Sefer. There's a very beautiful, profound concept. And you guys, once again, you're welcome to comment or say anything. You know, this is not just me, like, talking. Um, I, I want your feedback. I want to hear what's going on. And once again, if I can't answer, well, ask Ravorish. Thank God. But the concept that wherever you people are, I'm learning with my son, and it's a beautiful concept of Hanukkah, that there's a connection to the righteous person, the Sadiq. This is something we haven't spoken about so much. But the person who's totally focused in on the presence, who's able to be totally there and miyachin himself, to uni unify himself with all the souls of his generation and be able to inspire and enliven and clarify all the build bullying, all the confusion. And that was like the awe of Rabbi Nachman. That was the awe of Siddiqui for all the generations. Personally, I had a meeting with my personal Rebbe, the Tolna Rebbe. And when I just with him, the, the clarity he has towards my family and the way he's able to give that love and that truth about our souls. And he was able to even comment on a few other souls that are involved with our life and able to bring out how their souls have also truth and love and goodness in within them. And that is a tremendous opportunity when you connect yourself to righteous people that you're able to enter a different realm. And that's what Rabbi Nachman was saying with Hanukkah, the menorah, the clarity, the constantly adding on. And we see Yosef suddenly appears in this week's Pasha. He's suddenly important. Not only was he mentioned in last week's Pasha, but now we see him, how he functions towards Esau, that he's, that he's protecting his mother. He's the key to fight off that, that falsehood in the world that, rep, that represents Esau, that over-focus on, on physicality. He's able to take the physicality and spiritualize it. That's what he did in Egypt. So we're going to learn in the next few parshas. But the concept is that Yosef is Mosef. He takes the light of Yaakov, of truth. And Yaakov is the Aish. He's the fire of Ms. Ms is the Aish and fire of truth. And then he's able to take that with a flame. Yeah, Lahava, base Yosef Lahava. He takes that little fire, that spark of inspiration and 
puts it out into the world to light up all the straw of the cash of Ace of all this of Kina and Sina. The cash is Rashi Tev is Kina and Sina. He's able to burn it all away. And that's the power that Rabbi Nachman is saying on Hanukkah. That by adding a candle, by adding more clarity, more intelligence, yeah, that we were able to, able to, to, <laughs> I don't know what this person's writing. But yeah, but thank God, you know, there's always ability to put truth into the chat. And I appreciate you doing that. But if someone doesn't, then we'll just remove it. Yeah. But the, the ability, good morning. Wow, from North Carolina. Thank God we've got people from all around the world tuning in. And to understand that when you're learning the light of spirituality, it's not only about you, but it's about how you live it and how you share it. And that's how you get rid of a lot of the hatred and the jealousy that exists in the world is by representing that truth and living up to that truth and giving over that love. And that's what Aish is, Roshi Tevis is Ahava and Sholem, which is love and peace, as we spoke about last week, taking the fire of Hanukkah and bringing it out into the world through love and peace. And that's the, also the MS, the truth as well. Aleph is also MS as well. And that's Ava taking that outwards. And that was Yosef's ability. He was able to push off Ace of away from the family, the, the negative aspect of, of jealousy and hatred, and to be able to bring back into place the love and the truth that we've been focusing on. And that was the idea of last week when we could the, the concept of not getting involved with controversy, but to be able to focus in on the truth of life that brings peace to our home. And that will be practical in how we make decisions, how to run our daily life and how to prioritize our times. So as we mentioned already, family first, and just to conclude a little bit, and how to use our time effectively with our online classes and how to, when you have simchas now and you make, please God, you have good times, unfortunately not good times, where you, you be able to focus on what does Hashem want, how to use your resources, how to use your money to be able to buy mitzvahs or to waste it on luxuries, to be able to use it for to fill in like I did for my son or to use it for sitzis like I did for my for my family or to use it for Hadlach's Neris, for Shabbos food, for Yom Tov food, for Hanukkah Licht, for all the different things, to be able to buy books, to be able to educate your family, to be able to use the online resources to educate your family and your loved ones, to be able to create a light online. Please God, I'm going to be involved with courses and more and more things to be able to share more and more Amunah with the guidance of Rav Oresh, and to be able to do that kind of, of experience of life where your priorities are alive in your daily schedule. How you use your time at the end of the day. Personally, I'm writing a book, United Souls. So it's the end of the day. I don't have much energy, but my mind is moving. And I slowly, slowly start to form concepts in a book. And hopefully, my hope is it will bring together a lot of, a lot of unity, a lot of positivity in the world. And that's being effective with your time. And when you're with your loved ones, please God, to have the strength to not be distracted by all this online experience. Because that's also, you, you have a good intention because you want to share. And I know this myself. I go through this all the time. But at the same time, now you've got to tune in to what Hashem wants from you this moment. And that's my hope. We do have someone else about to speak. I think he's speaking in Russian, so we don't want to take his time away. Remember, we do have many languages going on in the studio. And I thank Hashem every time I have the merit to speak here. And thank God I didn't take for granted the Wi-Fi was smooth and as tired and as hard working I've been today and lack of food. The fact that things went smoother and we had a solution. And I believe your prayers, whoever prayed for this, that it should work and everything should go smoothly. And our Amuna class this week went smoothly. And please God, our time with Toronto has gone amazingly. And we're hoping that there'll be people making Aliyah, Terrace as well, more and more people coming back to the homeland so that this place can become a place where the world can get inspiration from and hear only good news from. And my prayer is that this Corona thing shouldn't hold us back from making special, special, special times together with family and loved ones. And we should share any good news. And I welcome you all to go to the detail, the description down there to partner with our projects, to get involved, click on the links, share the links, be, part, be a partner in this, share me your content, your Amuna content, partner with us. And yes, that's it. Someone said great light and love to all the souls. That's right. And this person said, I'll pray for your lost soul. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Oh, he's praying for someone else. Very nice. Thank you. He has a lost soul and he's praying for him. Um, but anyway, what else? Um, Isaiah? Okay. I don't know. People are saying all kinds of things and I'm sure it's beautiful. Just remember here, what the focus is on Amuna and the focus is on prioritization. And that's one of the things, you know, Joe Rogan himself says, don't read the comments. 
But I'm hopeful that the people who come here, we can read the comments. That they will be positive enough that the goal of these programs and these classes is to grow together. And that's my hope. But uh, once again, you know, if people don't, you know, respect that, then we have to have boundaries. And that's also part of the prioritization to know what to share and when to share and how to do it. So I have a lot on Baruch Hashem. I'm happy I was able to do this class. And hopefully next week in the middle of Sheva Baruch and after the wedding, wish us Mazel Tov. Pray for us to have only simchas. And we pray for you to only have simchas. We should only have blessings for the new color, the new brides and the chosen. And please God, the bemitz for boys should go in the way of Yaakov Avinu, Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. We're completing now with those three Avram Yitzhak Yaakov fathers together with Shachris, Min, Chamar, of all the prayer services. And we're going now into the next level, Yosef. We're adding on that light of Hanukkah, that fourth level of, of being like we spoke about last year, of that personal prayer, of that personal connection you know the most important thing when you're standing in front of the menorah and you're lighting those hadlachas neighbors or any time during the day throughout the whole year give those that 10 minutes like Ravosh talks about or longer to talk to Hashem to bring down that divine inspiration that divine light that emes that truth that ash that ahava the love the sholem that represents the the keys and the ability to prioritize your life in the most fulfilled way and so therefore we should be pleased God, all of us should share only simchas with the ultimate simcha, with the binyan by shlishi, and we'll be posting these in our podcast, please God. Remember we have the relationship podcast, where we spoke about this concept as well in relationship focus. We have the Unity Flow podcast, where we're talking about how to bring it out in projects. And please God, we have our Muna classes where we're doing here together with Rav Orish in his beautiful studio. And we please God, all of us together, all these classes will come together to bring us all to simcha shlema, where we'll all be able to dance together. We'll be fully healthy, fully happy, and all the good things we pray for will become reality. Amen. Thanks. And I'm so happy that the uh, uh, was able to